In the last video, I promised you a modern hard drive replacement, and we're going to look at that today. I splashed out on an SD card based hard drive emulator for my Atari STFM. I bought a SD for ST unit from eBay. I'll stick a link to it in the description. So right from the get go in this video, I want to say that the S for SD for ST, oh my, is a fine, capable product. Unfortunately, my ST runs TOS 1.02, which is neither fine nor capable. After plugging in the SD for ST and inserting the provided SD card into that, I booted from the new hard drive. It all looked good. I opened a folder, created a file, and it crashed. For a quick squiz at the instructions later for the SD for ST, I read that the provided ST image is TOS 104 or better. Ugh. Never mind. TOS 104 was first provided with the Atari STE, you know, the newer, better ST that I don't have. I started looking around for solutions that were 1.02 compatible. If you watched my previous video on the architecture of uh, TOS, and I'll stick a link to that in the end, you remember that I mentioned that there were several hard disk drivers available. It was AHDI, ICD Pro, HD Driver, and Peraputnix Driver. However, the only option available for me currently is ICD Pro. Peraputnik driver is TOS 104 or above. The HD driver web page says it isn't compatible with the SD for ST yet. And, well, a HDI is, well, the HDI, and it's best left on the install floppy, as I mentioned in my previous video. So I headed over to the official pages for the SD for ST, and on the downloads page, there are a number of pre-made images for SD cards for different drivers at different capacities. The entry that's marked blank ICD Pro 16 megabyte plus four times 256 megabytes. That image seemed to suit my purposes. It gives you a blank image with a 16 meg boot partition, which will be our C drive, and then four 256 megabyte partitions, which will form drives D through G. All of these are the max sizes possible under the version of TOS I'm running. And of course, half the size of the partitions that are spotted on TOS 1.04. Yeah, I'm kind of falling out of love with TOS 102 at this point. To create the SD card from the image, I used Belainer Etcher. Etcher is an application available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So I opened up Etcher and I choose Flash from File. I select the image we just downloaded. We get a severe looking warning that the image is missing a partition table. I mean, don't worry about that. We're not creating a modern bootable PC image, so we can just continue. Selected the device to burn to. Here, Etcher has very handily hidden the local devices on your host computer to prevent you from writing to the wrong device. That could lead you to corrupt your boot disk if you choose incorrectly from that list that is collapsed. After writing and verifying the SD card, which took about four minutes, so I'll speed that along. I transferred the SD card into the SD for ST and booted from it. And success! It was well behaved, if empty. So let's see how we get some content onto it. You just insert that card into your Mac or PC, it won't read it. I mean, Mac OS very helpfully offers to format it for you, but that's not exactly ideal. The card is written in AHDI format, and that means it's not FAT formatted. Now, Guess what version of TOS you need to use FAT formatted drives? And I mean, as a hint, it's not 102, but which I may have mentioned, I don't exactly worship the ground that it walks on. On the SD for ST site, there's a link to a Windows utility called Drive Image at the bottom of the downloads page. And that allows you to create folders and transfer files onto your hard drive. It can't move a folder and it's included content into the image, which is a little annoying and a bit of a chore. But still, if all you have is TOS 102, it works. I'm going to show you how to use Drive Image by getting the ST control panel set up on the C drive of my SD card. I covered what the control panel does and how to configure it in a previous video, and I'll link to that in the end cards too. So here I'm just going to get the files on the hard drive just to show you how it works. Now Drive Image is Windows only, so if you're a Mac user or a Linux user, you're going to have to look for alternatives. Okay, so we'll download and extract the zip file. We'll get an app called driveimage.exe. We need to run that app as administrator. This allows it low level access to the SD card reader. So once that's up and running, we need to select our SD card from the list of detected devices. In this case, it's drive three. And it's kind of obvious which one it is as it's the only small one. I mean, the SD card itself is only two gigabytes. But again, you have to be careful. Getting this choice wrong 
and writing ST formatted data to your PC's hard drive devices, for example, your boot partition, could corrupt your hard drive. So again, you know, as usual, you're using this at your own risk. Now, we need to get the files onto that device. So we hit the file transfer button on the right hand, it's not a trick name, and that takes us to the file transfer dialog. We select the ST partition that we want to write to from the partition list on the right. I'm going to choose the primary partition. This is our 16 megabyte C drive. The control panel needs to be on the C drive to be loaded at boot time. The left hand side list box now shows the contents of our C drive, and we can see the files that were written there as part of that default image. So let's copy the control panel accessory under the root of the C drive. To do that, we locate the folder on the PC or network share that it's in. We have to clear the files dialog filter. ACC files are not shown by default. So let's select the control panel accessory file and click OK. Now that we're back in the file transfer dialog, we can see that the x underscore UK ACK file is in the root of the C drive. Perfect. So now we need to create a subfolder to hold our control panel exceptions, extensions even. To do this, we enter the folder name into the text box and click new folder. You'll see the folder in the root of the C drive on the left. To add files to the CPX folder on the STC drive, we double click the file, which effectively CDs into it. Again, we hit add files. We go to the CPX folder in Windows. Change our filter to all again. Select all of the CPX files and hit OK. Back in the file transfer window, you can see all of the files have been written to the CPX folder in the SGE's C drive. The X button returns us to the main dialog, then we'll hit quit to exit. So after transferring that SD card to the SD for ST and rebooting, we see, whoa, success. At this point, I'm sorry about the quality of the video here. My cheap capture card renders the ST high res screen really dark for some reason. I'll do my best to brighten it up, but I don't think I can achieve the same sort of vibrancy you see on the screen. Now, this was not the quickest of processes. Imagine having to do this to install a complex app that had a main folder and lots of subfolders, like, say, the Papyrus Editor. It'd be a bit painful. But let's not get distracted from the fact that it works and it's a free solution. The Drive Image app was written by Peter Putnik, who's the author of the Periputnik drivers. Generously, it isn't restricted to drives created for his drivers and supports just vanilla AHDI drives. And that's something I'm grateful for. So we've proved hard drive support works on TOS 102. However, I want to be able to get the best out of my SD for ST drive and actually my ST in general. The limitations of TOS 102 are too many. I mean, did you know you can't even rename a folder on a hard drive? But I mean, hey, who could possibly want to do that? So it's time to do the inevitable. We need to get a copy of the TOS 104 ROMs, a screwdriver and a chip puller and get to installing. That should be simple. In the next video, I'll show you the process of upgrading to TOS 104 and the results of that. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.